Hi, my name is Peter Andruska, and I lead a research team at Level 5. In this section, you will hear about Autonomy 2.0, which is a machine learning first approach to building self driving cars. What we will hear in this section is how the current generation of self driving cars based on Autonomy 1.0 work, what are the limitations in its development, and then we will be talking about Autonomy 2.0, its main benefits and differences compared to Autonomy 1.0. Let's start with how self driving cars work today. A self driving car has a number of sensors that allow it to perceive a world around it. These are usually composed of lidars, cameras, and radars. For the self driving cars to do anything, it first needs to be able to make sense of all these data coming from all these sensors and understand what's around it. This means the positions of other cars, pedestrians, and cyclists. It also needs to be able to, to understand where are the positions of lanes, traffic lights, and traffic signs. This is called perception. Next, the car needs to be able to understand what will happen next. Where is everybody moving? This is called prediction. And based on this, the car can then plan its own path. And this is called planning. Finally, this, this path is executed, the car moves, and the cycle repeats. Now, when you look at this pipeline and how much machine learning is involved in each component, we see that the machine learning is used to solve only some of these problems, mainly related to perception and prediction. But especially when it comes to planning, the behavior of what the car should do, this is still mostly hand engineered. So to understand this, when the, the car is deciding what to do, it needs to be trading off number of different factors. For example, how much distance to give to other vehicles and cyclists, how much to stick to its lane and various comfort metrics. These factors and how to trade them are hand engineered by engineers. And this works pretty well, but it's very difficult to scale to new scenarios, new geographies, and to achieve human-like behaviors. Moreover, it's also very difficult to test requiring many hours of road testing for every build. In contrast, in Autonomy 2.0, every block is using machine learning, and it has a number of benefits. First, that the functionality of each block is defined by data rather than hand engineered. And the behavior of driving itself is learned from humans who drive. Finally, also the testing is done most, can be done mostly offline using simulation. And this simulation itself is learned from the real data uh, to make it very realistic. The fact that each block is powered by machine learning is that it works better and better more data you are training it on. Here is an example. This is the performance of a machine learning planner. And how it improves with the amount of data. The more data you are training it, the better it works. This is not the case for Autonomy 1.0. Furthermore, it allows us to scale rapidly across different geographies. Self-driving cars eventually need to work everywhere. It will be impossible to engineer all different rules in all different countries. With Autonomy 2.0, you need to build the stack only once and then collect the data in different countries and retrain the model. So what do we need to build Autonomy 2.0? We need a couple of things. First, we need data sets. We need a way to access them. And then we need machine learning algorithms. And in the following sections, you will hear about each of them and have also opportunity to build your own. So enjoy.